Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now is the time to trim your lamps and get ready for the coming of the Lord. Stay tuned for the Midnight Cry broadcast. The church in America, what there is of it that's real, has gone to sleep. And there's a cry going out. The bridegroom's coming. Wake up. I'm not done with what I'm doing in the earth, but, I, but my purpose and my plan is not for you to sit there, slumber through life while I magically do everything. I want to involve you. You are participants in my plan. And so you see, you follow this book through and you will see how Paul develops this. I'm not, you know, there's so much to this. I, I, I have to skate over the surface in a sense. But he talks about how we came out of being dead in sins and, and completely engulfed in a world ruled by devils. But how God, because of Christ, lifted us up, not just up, but all the way to a throne, a place of blessing, a place of power, a place of authority. Do you see yourself as in a place of authority today? That takes a revelation. Because we don't feel like it. It doesn't look like it. But I'll tell you, you get in a situation like Michael experienced last night, and you realize, yeah, it's a battle. It's a real battle. But we do, in Christ, have the upper hand. 
We operate from a position of power and strength and, and, and ability that comes from heaven. And so long as we don't put our faith in that and we, we just react with fear and, and, and all of those things, we'll sit there and be, oh, poor me, when Jesus has won it all. And so Paul is, continues to encourage. He talks about the, all the awesome uh, provision of Christ that we talked about so many times in chapter 3. And now to him who's able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory throughout all ages. See, then he begins to unfold our participation. And that's where he goes into the operation of the body of Christ, the fact that we do share a life. We are interrelated. That the growing up into him in all things has everything to do with life coming from you to him, to her, to, some, to everybody else. There's, a, there's life that, that I have because I'm connected with him. He has empowered me with the, with the means of helping somebody else. Life flowing through. Every member of the body of Christ participates in that process. Every single one. And so we grow up. And of course he gets into the, into the personal part because we can't just sort of live in sin and expect to participate in this. God means for that transformation to begin in us. And so he exhorts people to put their trust in him, to rise up, to take hold of the new life. That's part of the process, obviously, that we need to, we are children of light because he's made us that way. We need to learn to live that way. And so he has a whole section that he gets into on that, on that truth. Verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 8, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light. I'll tell you, there's a, if we, if, if we can ever wrap our brains around the fact that we really can do this, it would make a difference. It takes God opening the heart to say, wait a minute. Devil, I don't have to listen to you. Flesh, I do not have to listen to you. I can trust God and, and, and there's going to be battles, yes, but I am, I am the one in the upper hand. I have the upper hand here. Devil, I have power through, that comes from heaven that has the power to make you leave to make you give up, to make your hold disappear. Praise God. And I'm not going to try to go through all of these things, but you see how he's unfolding this. You start with the plan and the purpose and how God has brought us in and what he's brought us out of and what he's brought us to in the body of Christ. And then we learn, how do I participate? I learn to yield to him. I learn to live like, I, like I'm part of this. Is your life living, lived in the light of God's purpose? You see, there's a wisdom in this world. But the wisdom of this world is geared to the lusts, the blindness of this world. This world is, a, is what it's about. Get all you can get. Live, live to please yourself. Be all you can be. All those kinds of things. I'll tell you what. We need God to wash out our minds, renew them, teach us how to think, teach us how to see what this world is really about, what God is doing so we can be part of it. God has not called anybody here to be a spectator. Not the first person. I get it that you come and you listen to somebody talk. But God has not called you to be a spectator. He wants you and me and every one of us to be a participant in his purpose. And he's made every provision for that. The purpose, the provision, and now our participation. And so he gets into our relationships and how we live out this life that we've been given. But of course, then you get down to, the, to chapter 6 and you realize this is, not, this is not lived out in a vacuum, is it? We have enemies. The enemies are real. Verse 10 of chapter 6, Finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Now, what is it that we, how can we stand? Yeah, his power, not ours. His provision so that we can take our stand, you see? 
the full armor, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. You know, what I appreciate so much the emphasis in this movie about what the real battle is. Because it presents a couple that are battling. And one of them had to come to a realization that her battle was not against her husband. And she had to be waked up to the, to the reality that she had to fight her real enemy and you don't fight him by fighting him, fighting, her, fighting the husband. You get in the closet and you, and you do battle with him. And you let God do what only God can do. Boy, just about every couple that gets married goes to work on one another, some way or other. I was expecting this and you're not that, and I, you know. God deliver us. God help us to realize the supernatural characteristic of the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I will build my church. That gets right down to the nitty-gritty of your life and mine. It's his job to do it, but he does call for our participation. We participate by, by praying, by, by cooperating in our own spirits. That was another emphasis that I, I really appreciated, that, that the, the main character, one of the main characters in this movie, was, had to first realize her own need had to repent from trying to fix the situation, saying, Lord, I give up. Lord, I'm yours. I surrender. I'm going to do it your way. Lord, I know that this is something you only can do. Oh, if we understood what salvation is about, we'd know that it is a supernatural work of God. I realize people have been saved by all kinds of soul-winning efforts, that have employed formulas, they've, they've been saved in front, of the, in, in, in front of it, in spite of it, because God was at work with the heart. But you cannot bring, produce a formula that will produce a Christian. It is a work of God from somebody, for, uh, concerning somebody that God has foreseen from the beginning of the world. And he institutes the means to confront their hearts and, and turn their hearts to faith. And it takes, a, it takes a supernatural work of God in the heart. The things that you and I see, the needs that we experience in ourselves, the needs we see in others, God is the only one that can fix them, and he can. But he wants us to learn how to be participants in what he is doing in the world. So first of all, of course, it says, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. After you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. The breastplate of righteousness. Man, I need the righteousness that I didn't provide. God provided one. I could never do it. I need to believe in it and trust in it with all of my heart. Praise God. The breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with a readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. I've taken my stand in a place that I have peace with God. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. I tell you, sometimes we... I'm not so sure, you know, the de we, we listen, we reason with the devil, and he talks, and he presses, and our faith kind of just, mm. I said, wait a minute, my truth does not change because of the devil's reasonings and his lies. My truth is the truth. You take your stand upon it, whether you feel it, whether you see it, God honors faith in his promises and in his word. Praise God. The shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Now, isn't it interesting that he brings this in? And pray in the Spirit. Now, where does the energy come from? This isn't saying prayers. This is, this is a real spiritual activity. This is something that heaven energizes so that it goes out and accomplishes something eternal. 
Anybody here need to learn a little bit about that? Yeah. I sure do. But I sense God is longing to teach us how to participate in things that are eternal that he longs to do. And there, there are things that we, can, we can't even believe he can do, that he, he can do if people will, if we will just rise up and, and step into what he's talking about. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. You see, you see the place of prayer in all of this? Yeah, I cooperate, I learn, I do all these things, but when it comes to accomplishing something, I've got to pray. I remember listening to, praise God, my brain went dead, well as I know him, well-known minister on TV. Thank you, Charles Stanley. Don't, don't get old. Yeah, I've had the pleasure of meeting him several times, but he spoke at the convention we, we went to several, several years ago. And the theme of his message, I need to go back to, because something he learned throughout his life that whenever there was a spiritual battle going on, what he needed to do was not to go confront the situation, it was to go into his closet and fight the battle in the closet. And many times there were things going on in the church, there were controversies, there was something going on, and he would just go in and prostrate himself before the Lord and pray and pray, and he'd come out and God had worked. That's too simple. I want to fix it. But there's a truth in that. And I'll tell you something that I wish I had learned better when I preached it, but I remember years ago the Lord gave me a message called God's fireman. You ever, anybody remember that? You know, the, the illustration of a fireman is when you break it down, what a fireman does, uh, it, it's kind of a simple thing. He's got a fire over there. And he's got a source of water over here, and his job is to connect the two. Now, he can wave his, wave his uh, hose around. It won't do a bit of good. It might, might look, you know, really impressive. But unless he is connected to a source of water under pressure, it isn't going to accomplish anything. But even if he's connected to that and he's just waving it around, that isn't going to do anything either. You see, what, what needs to happen is to be connected to that source and then to take that hose and put it where it needs to be. This is, I believe, as much as anything the Lord wants to emphasize today. This is how we participate. Yes, I believe God needs to give us a deeper revelation of, the, of his purpose and his provision so that we will understand our place in the scheme of things. We will know that we are up here and not down there but also that we have the privilege of getting to know him in a way where we, he can show us a need and we can learn instead of trying to fix it, to go into the closet and specific, be specific and say, God, I am standing in faith. God, you are the only one that can deal with this situation. You're the only one that can deal with the heart. And God, I am bringing this to the throne in faith that you, because I know that this has got to be your work. That's my place. That's how I participate. There's, there are needs that need to be met. There are devils that need to be driven off. You know, Jesus talked about the, uh, when he said he's going to build his church, what else did he say? The gates of hell will not prevail against it. The gates of hell represent the Satan's attempts, whatever he erects, to keep his prisoners in. I don't have the, I don't have the power to breach that. But Jesus Christ is head over everything to the church. We have the privilege of going to the very throne room of heaven and seeing God take divine life and divine influence. This is how he's ordained to do it. He's ordained that we participate in this. He's not going to do this without us. He's going to raise up those through whom he can dispense his life. We become channels just like the hose or the firemen, we, we, we become channels of life that comes from heaven and goes to a situation that only God can fix. You see what God is trying to say through all of this? 
And where is he going with this? Let me just bring in a scripture and then relate this in 1 Corinthians 15, one we've heard before. Because Paul talks about the end, the consummation, when he's going to bring everything under the headship of Christ. And so Paul talks about, uh, there's a lot in here, I, I, I'm going to cherry pick right in the middle, but he talks about the, the, the consummation when everybody's going to be raised in him. and says, then the end will come when he comes. Those who belong to him, that's the transformation. That's when our bodies will be redeemed. That's when everything will be transformed in a, in a moment. It says that later in this passage. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. Now, do you see what the picture is between the cross when he declared it was finished and the resurrection and this consummation that he talks about? He's reigning. He's reigning. There is authority being dispensed from heaven to accomplish this eternal purpose. But yet God wants to dispense that power through people who will join with his purpose and become so united with it that he can dispense what happens through them. It's a lot to wrap our mind around, but it's so, there's a simplicity that I pray that God will make real. God, only God can make this real to our hearts. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. Obviously, he's talking about now. This is the world we live in. He's got enemies. But just remember the things Brother Thomas used to preach. And this is, this is a reality. What does it mean for the enemies to be put under his feet? Are they not already there? In one sense, they are. But since he has become connected to a body of which we are part, until all those enemies are under our feet, you see what's happening? God is longing for the victory that was won, at the in, won on behalf of the head. It's in him. The life is in him to begin to flow more fully down into the body so that we can step into, in a practical sense, the victories that he has won. Not only that, we can become channels of life to see victories in other people. God longs for us to understand the power and that we have the privilege of exercising, receiving it, benefiting from it, and exercising it. Only God can make this real. I just pray that he will. He has put everything under his feet. See, that's, well, let me, uh, let me back up. The last, I'm in verse 26, for anyone trying to follow chapter 15. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When is death destroyed? When he comes. Boy, that makes, that makes your eschatology about the, the, way th the way this world ends really simple. He reigns from the cross until, until he comes. When he comes, it's over. The last enemy is destroyed. There's nothing after that. Now when it says, for he has put everything under his feet, now when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be subject to him who put everything under him so that God may be all in all. So do you see kind of where we're at History is winding down to a close. God is longing to wake up his people to realize what is happening, to realize that his purpose is still being unfolded in our lives, in the lives of others, and he longs for us to understand his purpose in a greater measure, to understand his provision for you and for me and for people we're concerned about in a greater way. But not just to sit there and say, oh, God, somehow, some way. Lord, help me to be a participant in absolutely dispensing the power of heaven to change lives. Do you believe we have that power, that place in him? Do you believe he can teach us? How, I mean, yeah, I, I'm not there either. But I believe with all my heart God can take people just like us and teach us 
how to be participants in the eternal purpose of God. And I'll tell you, we're going we're gonna to stand there on that day and we're going to know that all the power, all the virtue came from heaven. All, the, all that qualified us to be part of that came from heaven. And we just surrendered and trusted in, what, in his provision. And, but oh, what a privilege it is, not just to sit there and say, oh God, I, I admire you, look at what you're doing, but to say, I have the privilege of being part of it. God wants to minister to the situation. He wants me to become a channel to make a difference in that. I can go into a closet or wherever, and I can bring that request to him in faith, and I can stand in faith, and I can see God work to do things I could never begin to do. As I say, I, I feel, in one sense, my weakness and my inability to, to even begin to wrap my own mind around this, but I know it's real. I, I sense what God's trying to say. I just pray that God will help us. To the extent you and I don't understand, let's cry out and say, God, I want, to, I want the revelation. I want you to open my understanding. Paul prayed that for those people. I can, I can pray that for me too, but I can pray that for everyone I sit around, everyone I'm, I'm, I'm part of the body of Christ with. I can pray, God, open our eyes to see what God is doing, what he's given us, and what our place is. And I'll tell you, we can, be, we can be an active participant in the kingdom of God in ways that we have not dreamed. You think this is real? You think we need him to help us to get there? Yeah. No question about it. We need him. But I'll tell you, he is the, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. This didn't, this didn't start. God is not, he's not Indiana Jones trying to make it up as he goes along. This plan was conceived, provided for, and made certain before he ever created the world. He just allows us to be part of it because that's the thing that gives him the most pleasure, to take people like us and make sons and daughters of his to enjoy eternity with him. Praise God. You want to live for something else? Go for it. You're not going to like the end, but I'll tell you, you give your heart to him. You're going to have battles here, but it'll be worth it all when we see Jesus. Praise God. This has been the Midnight Cry broadcast. If you would like a DVD or a CD of today's message in its entirety, please request it by program number. DVDs are $10 and CDs are $5. And for those who request it, we will send you our quarterly publication, The Midnight Cry Messenger, free and postage paid. Send your request to Midnight Cry Ministries, Post Office Box 685, Southern Pines, North Carolina, 28388. We invite you to join us again next week at the same time. And may God richly bless you until then.